In this demonstration, I want to make a type of 3D text where the edge of each letter has zero thickness and the center of the letter stands up from the horizontal plane. The way I'm going to do this is by using the dynamic paint method. I'm going to make a three-dimensional block of text. I'm going to use that as the as the brush for the dynamic paint method and I'm going to paint that onto a highly subdivided plane. So now I have my text object and I can add the plane that I'm going to subdivide. The, um, the first thing I do is form it approximately into the shape that surrounds the text. Then I divide it into squares by selecting the long edges and subdividing them. And then I select all the edges and subdivide them 150 times. This number was chosen. Uh, if you zoom in really closely, you'll be able to see that the um, that the thin the thinnest part of the letter, that's the horizontal stroke of the E, still is about three vertices wide. So it's going to be able to take a three-dimensional shape after I do the modification. So now I can turn my text into a mesh and uh, extrude it in the vertical direction to make the volume which is going to be the, uh, the brush for the dynamic paint effect. So now looking at the side view, I can see that the text crosses the plane. And now I'm also going to extrude the, uh, the horizontal plane that I created. The reason for this is that uh, if I have only a single plane and I do a Boolean intersect with my text object, I've discovered that it creates two surfaces. The one surface has the um, has the grid that I want to deform, but the other surface has um, has edges which cross the letters, which is not uh, attractive. So, um, so that's why I start off by by doing an intersection with a text on a, a three-dimensional object. And now, if you take a look at this one, you can see that both surfaces, the top and the bottom surface, um, have the grid uh, the grid of vertices. But I only need one, so I'm going to remove the bottom the bottom vertices. I can do that um, in the in the X-ray view or the wireframe view, which you get from typing Z. And now you can see that I have only the uh, the top vertices left. So I'm moving them back down into the center of the view. So there you go. You can see it's a single uh, single lattice of vertices. So now. I can um, go out of wireframe view and now I don't actually want to see this text object or I can I can see it in wireframe that's convenient and I want to take it out of the list of objects to be rendered so I'm switching off its render so now it's just sort of a virtual object and I can now create the brush that I'm going to use for the dynamic paint and what I want to do is to make it uh, to make it mesh volume um, plus also an internal extent. So I wanted to paint inwards on the inside of its volume. Uh, so I'll give it a thin a thin thickness because I wanted to paint um, to paint the edge of the letter not at all and then the, the center of the letter I wanted to paint heavily. So now I can make the the text itself into a canvas. Uh, there you can see that the, uh, the center of the letter um, has got some of a paint and I can assign a vertex group to the, um, to the paint effect. So now just to make the, um, the paint a little bit heavier, I can reduce the thickness of the, um, of the extent of the painting from the edge of, um, of the brush and you can now see the center is getting the full thickness. 
So now it's time to add the modifier. I'm going to use the solidify modifier on this one and uh, use the vertex group which I, which I created with a dynamic paint. Now you can see this is now pushing it downwards so I'm going to have a, a negative thickness that will make it push upwards from the horizontal. That's a bit too much. I can I can reduce that thickness a little bit here. There we go, that's better. And now I can still see that it looks a bit blocky, so I'm also going to add a subsurface modifier. And now that's a nice smooth effect. So I'm going to skip all the scene setting and uh, material selection and go straight to the render so that you can see what this looks like after I put it onto a, onto a surface and light it a bit. So there we go, with, a, with an opaque but shiny material we get a, an attractive appearance and you can also use this um, as a transparent material um, if you um, if you switch on um, if you allow the uh, the bottom surface to take transparent uh, transparent shadows so there you have it comments please uh, could I have done this more simply is this the best way to do it thank you